Right. A little bit of a rough start to this project, but uh, that's pretty much the way things are going right now on this project and indeed the world. Uh, this project is going to be my first project since the coronavirus hit. So uh, there's, I've got nothing to do and I'm really bored. So I decided to start this project, but uh, I lost the first part of the footage. Now, luckily, the, the only part that I lost was the part where I ex explain what I'm doing in this project and then me basically uh, tracing out the outline of the knives onto the steel um, that's got mark blue marking fluid all over. All in all, not that bad. It starts off with me cutting it up on the bandsaw, but uh, I'm gonna do four knives for this project and they're all gonna go th through the steps uh, together. It's gonna be made out of AEBL stainless steel. I had a billet of it, 48 inches long, that was five, 30 seconds thick. Uh, and this is pretty much the last of the AEBL steel. First of the four knives is gonna be a paring knife for a guy that I know who requested one from me. He is a friend of a friend. Uh, he requested a paring knife because he loves to cook and that's the thing that he doesn't have right now. So first paring knife that I've made. So that's gonna be interesting. I recently made two chef's knives for my sister and her husband as a sort of wedding present Christmas gift. And I really enjoyed doing that project. Uh, I really enjoyed making the chef's knives, so uh, I'm gonna make two for myself. The last knife that's gonna be in this project is gonna be a boot knife for my buddy who is in the army, and he requested a knife that he could have on him at all times, so he could just wear it all the time, and it's small, utilitarian, that he can use whenever he needs it. So now it's just time to focus on the work, and hopefully that'll be a lesson that I learn next time to um, really get better at, you know, at the end of every day, just go ahead and downloading them onto my computer into into the files and making sure that everything everything is there. Hopefully I can avoid doing that in future projects. But anyways, let the fun begin.
last time I did a fuller on a knife, I used a ball end mill and went down and across like this on it. And uh, it was okay, but the ball end mill started to wander a little bit, which I didn't like and it required a lot of cleanup at the end. And I don't know, it was just, it was just a lot of work and it, it wasn't, it wasn't quite straight either. And that, that worries me for, you know, future projects, especially like this one. So uh, what I'm gonna do is use this tool right here. This is meant to chuck up in your milling machine and it'll go, your piece will be standing upright like, like this in the vise and then it's gonna go across like this and cut along it so that it's very rigid and you get a nice consistent cut. And then I can just, when I'm done with this side, I can just raise it up, put it down the other side and do the other side. There's no taking it out of the chuck and then putting it back in and you know, that can create all sorts of issues if you want you know it to be directly along the center line on both sides. What I can do is I can just set the stops to make sure that it stops at the right places this way and then I can set the vertical stop. It's gonna stop vertically at the place where I want it to and then I can just raise it up, go behind the piece and do the other side. And it'll be nice and consistent on both sides and hopefully I'll get a nice straight fuller um, that looks really, really good on both sides and it'll be symmetrical and um, I won't have to do as much cleanup. Okay, so that didn't go exactly as I had planned. It wasn't actually as straight down the line as I wanted it to be. I didn't have it as square up in the chuck as I had wanted. The result was it was perfectly, you know, both the both, both the fullers matched on both sides, but it was sort of off to the side a little bit and a little bit crooked. So um, there's really no way to fix that with the 3 16 inch uh, radius cutter. So um, what I did was I took that big square cutter that I had taken off of that tool, tool arm before and I just used that. So the result is a square fuller. I readjusted it in the chuck and it's, it's a lot more symmetrical than it was, but it's not perfect. But you know what, the battle with symmetry is one that... Uh, you know, I, I certainly struggle with. It's just something that I'm gonna have to get better at. For right now, this is fine, especially since uh, I don't have any more AEBL steel or stainless steel for that matter. So um, this one's gonna be this one's gonna be good enough, and I th I think it'll look better to my eye um, once I get the bevels cut in, as well as when I when I finish up, you know, grinding all of this away and getting it all squared up and stuff like that. So, you know, I think this square fuller will look interesting. I don't know if it's going to be any good or not. It certainly will be interesting. So next up I'm going to do is rough in all of the uh, bevels. So uh, it's going to take a lot of, uh, it's probably going to take um, quite a few belts, probably at least four. Might have to order new belts after today. Because those are you're gonna run thin real quick, especially for that kitchen knife with the really high grind that goes all the way up to the spine. So I'm gonna lay out the marking fluid on all of them and then uh, tracing those edge lines. Yeah. 